So this podcast, we're really going to look at the classifications of medicines. In the UK, there are three legal classes of medicine. So we have the first one, GSL, which is um, otherwise known as the general sales list, P medicines, which are pharmacy medicines, and POMs, prescription-only medicines. Now, the legal classification of any medicine is um, either within the MEP or the BNF. Now, the general sales medicines, the general sales list, those are medicines which can be, with reasonable safety, sold or supplied otherwise than by or under the supervision of a pharmacist. So, therefore, it doesn't require a pharmacist for its sale and supply. They have to be sold from proper shops, um, but they don't have to be pharmacies. And some products can even be sold from vending machines. Now, pharmacy medicines, there isn't a definitive list of these medicines. Um, They have to be sold from a registered pharmacy. And also the sale has to be under the supervision of a pharmacist. Now, products aren't currently available for self-selection. There was a time where there was talk of pea medicines being available for self-selection. However, that hasn't um, come to fruition. Now, looking at supervision, this is again covered in another video cast. Now, the prime function of supervision of a pharmacist is to ensure public safety. Um, And the human medicines regulations require supervision for the sale and supply of P medicines and um, for POM. And what it stipulates is that sales must be made by a pharmacist or by a person acting under the supervision of a pharmacist. And when you look at the responsible pharmacist, Um, regulations which encompass um, supervision then it really stipulates that that it is the person making the sales supply who's being supervised not the actual transaction also the pharmacist must be present in the professional area when any sales or supplies are taking place Professionally, you are required to have um, a written protocol for supervision, but also for the sales and supply of medicines. And also there is a requirement that assistants who are working within the pharmacy have to have accredited qualifications to allow them to carry out specified tasks. Now, prescription-only medicines, um, they will... They are classed as um, POMs if they require medical supervision in their use to prevent a direct or indirect danger to health. They can also be classified as POMs if um, it's acknowledged that they are widely or frequently misused and therefore can present a danger to health. Or if those, that medicinal product is a new active substance or if it is for parental administration. Normally, prescription-only medicines are only available in response to a prescription given by an appropriate practitioner. Now, those include medical prescribers, for example, doctors, and non-medical prescribers, for example, independent pharmacist prescribers. Now, prescriptions themselves, that's the actual piece of paper, um, they have to fulfil certain legal requirements in order to be valid. And those uh, requirements relate to patient details, prescriber details, dates and signatures. And we're going to more of those uh, details in another video cast. Now, prescriptions, they're normally dispensed in registered pharmacies. They, the actual dispensing process is either carried out by or, or undertaken under the direct supervision of a registered pharmacist. Um, And the actual process dispensing must be safe and accurate because errors can be very costly. And you'll hear about um, various stories within your M-Farm about some dispensing errors and the consequences of those. So again, because this process is an acknowledged process, it has specific people involved, so it has to be under the direct supervision of a pharmacist, then there will be a standard operating procedure, so a specific process that's actually written out for all members of staff to read, agree upon and sign up to that they will follow that procedure in order for that process to be the most safe and accurate process that it can be. Now, um, for prescription only medicines, when they are supplied, uh, records do have to be made for, for the sale and supply of POMs. And again, the law will set out the information that has to be recorded and this will be Um, covered in another video cast. Now, medicines which are exempt from POM status, um, they can be made exempt on the basis of one or more of the following characteristics. So maximum strength, use of administration, their purpose for use, their pharmaceutical form, their treatment limitation, so that's the maximum daily dose or maximum dose, and the maximum quantity. 
So if we consider when is a POM not a POM? So a, a medicine that's classified as POM, there can be certain conditions where it isn't classified as a POM. It could be a P medicine or a GSL. So take, for example, ibuprofen. Now that can exist as a POM, P or GSL classification. So the lower classification will require certain conditions to be fulfilled. So again, thinking back about those specific characteristics, um, it, specifically, the drug can be used for certain conditions or there are patient parameters, for example, age that it can be used for. If there's a maximum strength, a maximum dose, a maximum daily dose or maximum pack size, that can also stipulate which cl um, legal classification that medicine is under. So again, sticking with ibuprofen, the P version, that can only be used for internal use, so orally. Um, it has only, it can only be used for specified conditions, for example, headache. It has a maximum dose of 400 milligrams and a maximum daily dose of 1,200 milligrams. So if those conditions are met, then the ibuprofen will be classified as a P medicine. However, ibuprofen at the GSL level, again, for internal use, again, for specified conditions, for example, headache, the age comes into play here, so there's a limit of it only being used for adults and children over 12. It has a maximum strength of 200 milligrams, a maximum dose of 400 milligrams, and a maximum daily dose of 1,200 milligrams, and the pack size cannot be more than 16 tablets. So again, if those conditions are met, then the ibuprofen will be classified as general sales list. If we go further into other conditions, um, higher daily dosage than the 1,200 milligrams stipulated, then we are looking at the prescription only medicine classification. So that's really a whistle stop tour of the three legal classifications of medicinal products. I'd recommend that you also look at the resources highlighted within the pre-session work because you will need that to undertake the tasks within the session.